The two guards that were supposed to be checking on Jeffrey Epstein have been indicted and arrested by the FBI on conspiracy charges, as well as several counts of falsifying records. And get this, they're adding that they believe that the FBI is investigating criminal enterprise. I have no idea what that means, but I have some bad news for you. While one, yes, we can say the FBI is confirming conspiracy in the Jeffrey Epstein case. It is low tier, non, it's, 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 you're, you're not getting what you want, right? Everybody, everybody says Epstein, you know, didn't end his own life. There's that meme. I got to be careful about how I phrase things on YouTube. But in reality, what they're claiming is that these individuals were just browsing the internet and falsifying records for essentially the conspiracy was they colluded with each other to not do their jobs. And it resulted in this, I don't know, this uh, horrifying incident. And we even have, you know, look, the gatekeepers and media saying nothing unusual. See, this proves it. No, this proves nothing. Okay. What it does prove is that the bare minimum, we have something nefarious going on. And I don't think this will be enough to satisfy anybody. Now, now I will, I will clarify. I can't tell you exactly what or why. I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't believe. I'm going to read you the news as it see fits, but I will make one very important point. For the longest time, the naysayers, the rejectors who said, this is all, this is all, you know, this is what happens in prisons. It's terrible. They said nothing, nothing was happening. But then all of these weird things started emerging that the, fo- the cameras weren't working, the guards were sleeping or whatever. But now we have step one. They want to act like there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, the FBI just filed some conspiracy charges against individuals. This could be hope that there's going to be a deeper investigation to what really happened. Because mind you, not saying the guy's worthy of any credibility, but Epstein apparently told people that his cellmate attacked him. Now everyone questions whether that happened, but I'll tell you what, man, you watch Joe Rogan, you watch any mainstream personality, they will not believe what they're trying to pass off. So I'll say it. Perhaps this FBI, these charges, perhaps it's a glimmer of hope that there will be a real investigation into what's going on, or perhaps it's just trying to throw a bone to the masses because they know the meme won't stop. But there is a bigger update. Kevin McCarthy, Republican, is demanding answers from ABC News. Why do these media gatekeepers withhold this information? One of the biggest stories, they say, oh, we couldn't, we didn't have enough to go on. Sorry, not buying it. Photos, witnesses, and now you've got uh, Prince Andrew uh, giving that interview and everyone saying, wow, no direct denial, just I don't remember. Let's read this story from the Daily Mail. And I got a bunch of other things to go through. I got some, some, some uh, I've actually got the indictment here. This is crazy. But there's more important information, too. I'm gonna, I am don't want to bury the lead. This is a big story. These prison guards rejected a plea deal. And everyone was asking, what are they being accused of? Well, now we know. Two days later, conspiracy. So perhaps that'll be enough to satisfy, you know, some people. Nah. The meme is not that, uh, uh, you know, no one's saying the guards neglected to watch Epstein. That's not the meme. The meme is that Epstein didn't take his own life. But let's read this news. Before we get started... Make sure you head over to timcast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There's multiple ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, share this video. Let me stress, I will not tell you what you should or shouldn't believe about this. I will just read you the story, talk about some of the ideas around it. And I know invariably the, these media gatekeepers, the Huffington Posts, the ABCs will say, Tim's a conspiracy theorist. They don't want you to talk, talk about the story. They don't want you to think critically about how dangerous it is that this high profile uh, individual who but probably had evidence and was about to out a bunch of high-profile individuals as creepy, disgusting monsters, just so happened these two guards weren't doing their job. So maybe that's the extent of it. I don't know. But I'm saying something doesn't smell right. I will stress that point I just made. Initially, we had these media gatekeepers saying, nothing to see here. This is normal. Well, now the FBI has launched a criminal enterprise investigation, and there's two conspiracy arrests. If the people refuse to let up, maybe it'll go further. Or maybe it'll end here. Maybe this is the extent of it. I don't know. I'm just trying to point out that they said nothing was happening. Nothing was going on. And all of a sudden we have a conspiracy charge. I think what happened is the people refused to be quiet. And so now they're saying, okay, okay, we'll we'll keep digging. Not that it's a conspiracy. I'm not saying that. Calm down, calm down. I'm saying maybe they don't care. And and you need pressure from the public to make change in this country, whatever it may be. There may be more or there may not be, but let's read. They say the FBI is investigating criminal enterprise in connection with Jeffrey Epstein's death. Prison chief admits as male and female guards are indicted for browsing the internet instead of checking on him, even though he was in the closest cell to the desk. I kid you not. 15 feet, they say. He was 15 feet away. But they got up and apparently walked around. Oh, something doesn't smell right. 
They say the two Federal Bureau of Prisons employees, Tova Noel and Michael Thomas, were charged on Tuesday with falsifying records and conspiracy in relation to Epstein's death. They will face the U.S. District Court in Manhattan later on Tuesday over their alleged failure, failure to check on the millionaire. We'll call him just the evil, evil offender, because I got to be careful about the words used on YouTube. In his cell at the Metropolitan Correction Center the night he died, their arrest came as Bureau of Prisons Director Kathleen Hawk Sawyer testified in front of a Senate Judiciary Committee on Tuesday, quote, the FBI is involved and they are looking at criminal enterprise. What, what, what does that really mean? If they're going to allege these two individuals conspired, what do they conspire to do? Go to the lunchroom and eat Cheetos? Because if that's the case, I think it's weird that they're charging him with conspiracy, but they are. That's why I think maybe it's about placating the public. Maybe Epstein really did, you know, take his own life. Maybe he did. Okay. No one really believes that, but maybe he did. And maybe now they're concerned that people won't stop. And so this is what they're throwing a bone. I don't know. I can't tell you. They say, Noel and Thomas, who were assigned to Epstein's special housing unit at the federal jail, are accused of failing to check on him every half hour as required and fabricating log entries to claim they had. So what, the cameras didn't work. He claimed his previous cellmate attacked him. These two guards get up, falsify records and walk away. Something else. Look, how'd the cameras break? You know, I'll admit maybe the cameras were always broken and they don't want to admit the system's corrupt. That's possible. But come on. Too many, too many grains of sand, too many coincidences. How many coincidences until you've won the lottery? That's what I always say. In the lottery, it's what, five or six? This, this is nuts. Uh, they say they were allegedly just 15 feet from his cell. Now, uh, the two guards are accused of repeatedly signing false certifications saying they had conducted multiple counts of inmates during their shift. The prisoners were not checked on for eight hours, according to the indictment. The guards discovered Epstein bo Epstein's body at 6.30 a.m. They go on to talk about the broken bones and neck. The charges are the first in connection with the 66-year-old's death after he took his own life in August at the MCC while awaiting trial on charges of abusing teenage girls. Now, now Daily Mail says it's definitive that he took his own life, but I'm going to say this. If you've got an independent pathologist uh, saying that's not the case, and you have uh, the official pathologist saying it is the case, inconclusive. Because I'll tell you what, we don't just take the government's word for it. That's not proof. That's not a statement of fact. And it's hard to know at what point something becomes definitive. But I'll tell you this, famed pathologist in viral public stories saying no way. And the official, you know, uh, uh, autopsy report, yes way. So, so who do you choose to believe? Do you just choose to believe the government? Well, that's absurd. Journalists shouldn't do that. In which case, I don't know what to tell you, man. Inconclusive. They say uh, both guards have been working overtime because of staffing shortages when Epstein was found. The two officers were placed on administrative leave while the FBI and the Justice Department's inspector general investigated the circumstances surrounding his death. The warden of the MCC was, all, uh, was also reassigned. Epstein had been on suicide watch after he was found on July 23rd on his cell floor with bruises on his neck. He was taken off uh, watch about a week before his death which meant he was, he was less closely monitored, but still supposed to be checked on every 30 minutes. I just, I, you know, man, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to tell you what is, but I'll tell you this. As we all know, 30 minutes, what does that mean? It means nothing. Falsifying records? If there's criminal enterprise, it's not just these two guards, I'll say, to say the least. Both Epstein's brother and the lawyers who represented him in the criminal case have expressed doubts about the medical examiner's conclusion. His autopsy report found his neck had been broken in several places, including the hyoid bone located near the Adam's apple. Forensic experts said the breakages to that specific bone could occur when people hang themselves, but were more commonly seen in victims who had been strangled. A source close to Epstein told Daily Mail that he appeared to be in good spirits in the days before his death. His brother Mark recently said he could not think of a single reason why Epstein would take his own life. He called the financier's death suspicious and said he had seen no evidence to support the official ruling on his brother's cause of death. So, so you get the point. I don't want to rehash all of the old stories, but I will say this. These guards have rejected a plea deal. The feds wanted them to admit to falsifying records, which they refused to do. Is it possible these guards are essentially a pat, being, uh, serving as patsies? I don't know. And I got to be very careful, but you can believe whatever you want. All I can say is we don't know yet. This is just the latest breaking news. Here's the indictment. Count one, conspiracy. They say in or about August 2019 in the Southern District of New York, Tova Noel and Michael Thomas, the defendants, knowingly conspired with each other to knowingly defraud the U.S. by impairing, obstructing, and defeating the lawful function of the Department of Agency of the United States, to wit, the MCC's function to ensure the care, custody, and control of its inmate population. They say they went on to make false statements 
And then they, they falsely certified several times. There are several counts of false records. This seems strange to me. If somebody did their job poorly, why would they be indicted on conspiracy? I don't know. But what I can say is from the Washington Post story, this is from August 21st. They say, the investigations have already found a troubling lack of follow through by Bureau of Prisons personnel after a July 23rd incident in which Epstein may have tried to kill himself, according to people familiar with them. In that incident, guards rushed to Epstein's cell when his cellmate at the time, Nicholas uh, Tartaglioni, began yelling. According to these people, Tartaglioni told officers he had noticed Epstein had a bedsheet around his neck and appeared to be trying to kill himself, the people said. Epstein denied that, they said, and told prison staff he had been attacked, something Tartaglioni denied. Was there an investigation in that? I mean, if you find somebody with bruises on their neck and two people yelling, typically the cops are going to arrest, detain the other person and question whether or not they had anything to do with that. So I think it's fair to say, story, don't add up. Well, there's more. Let me, let me see what we have here. This story is about a new accuser has come out. A new accuser, Maria Farmer, says uh, Ghislaine Maxwell threatened her life and the FBI failed her. So let's stop now. And there's a reason I'm highlighting the story. For one, this is breaking news as well. This is from today. A new accuser coming out. The FBI failed her. Well, the FBI is now charging these two guards who rejected the plea deal. It doesn't add up. I'm sorry, man. I don't know what that means. I'm not alleging a conspiracy, but I am telling you. If the FBI is investigating this and saying these two guards did a thing, they refused the plea deal and decided to go up against the federal government on this one. And this woman saying the FBI failed her, who are you going to trust? Everything is, is messed up. And, you know, it's, it's a tough position because you have these mainstream media journalists that do everything in their power to stifle investigation and make sure, none, make sure that none of us can actually dig into these stories by trying to destroy anyone who would seek to actually investigate. Two jailers charged in Epstein's, you know, death. But in, in the story, they quote the ACLU. Check this out. David Fothy, the director of the ACLU National Prison Project, noted the problem. Tragically, there's nothing out of the ordinary about what happened to Mr. Epstein. Are you kidding me? And there's therefore no reason to resort to bizarre conspiracy theories. This is just the, you know, baseline dysfunction of prisons and jails and how suicide prevention in most prisons and jails is broke. Who are these people? that are trying to basically slap us in the face and tell us to deny all of the problems we have seen. A, 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 he was either attacked or attempted it the first time. So he should, not be, he should, he should have been kept on, on, on live CCTV for the internet to watch. No, the camera broke. The guards falsified records. A new, a new witness, a, a new victim emerges saying the FBI failed. You want us to cast all of this aside and say, you know, these things happen. Yeah, sometimes I have no problem saying that. Sometimes I, I'd have no problem citing Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which can be explained by incompetence. This is not one of those cases. This is a case where something happened and we don't know what, because you've got two different uh, uh, pathologists saying one thing or the other. I don't know who to trust. You've got the FBI being accused of failing one of the victims. You've got, listen, man, Roger Stone. This is a point brought up by, by many people on the right. They raid his house, house with a SWAT team. Because what, he lied to Congress? But what about Epstein with his private island and the accusations against him and the numerous witnesses? They tell us there is nothing out of the ordinary here. Is that a joke? Because I'll tell you what, even uh, Kevin McCarthy Republicans are saying something is out of the ordinary here. There's a lot going on here. Why did ABC News spike this story? We now have a letter, Megyn Kelly breaking the story that Republicans, Kevin McCarthy, who else do we have? We have Kevin McCarthy. We have Mike McCall. And we have Doug Collins sending a letter asking these questions. They go on to talk about ABC News and the Project Veritas report, for a letter from Congress. And they are now threatening inquiries into this. Recently, we saw some people were testifying to the Judici Judiciary Committee already. This is not going away. So to those gatekeepers in the media who want to say there's nothing to see here, stop. Stop. We're not playing this game, okay? We've got politicians demanding answers, at least insofar here with ABC News and now testifying about the prison uh, to the ju Judiciary Committee. But check this out. They go on to talk about Epstein, about the accusations, and they say this. To that, en to that end, we are requesting more information from ABC News. Will ABC News provide Congress the interviews Ms. Robach conducted with the victim? Uh, let, me, let me give you a quick context for those aren't familiar. Project Veritas released a video where you had this ABC News anchor saying, we had this story three years ago, ABC wouldn't air it. 
And based on what she was saying, she said we had everything. We had Clinton. We had photos. We had witnesses on the record. They spiked the story. So they asked, will ABC News provide Congress with the interview? What did ABC News learn about Jeffrey Epstein after Ms. Robach first presented her story to executives? Who was involved in deciding the story was not of public interest? And what were the reasons for deciding so? Can Ms. Robach expand on the outside forces she mented, mentioned as potentially responsible for the story not running? Was ABC News ever presented with additional evidence on Mr. Epstein from the time Ms. Robach first brought her investigation to the network and when he was ultimately arrested? Were authorities alerted at any time after Ms. Robach presented ABC News executives with her reporting? If so, when and what was provided? I think the answer is no, but maybe. And may- maybe ABC News spiked the story. Uh, uh, let's be fair. There's, there's a slim possibility. I'll entertain this possibility that ABC News had the information, reached out for a comment, and were told by the feds, please, we're actively investigating this. You can't do the story. It'll compromise the investigation. It could be that simple. And so there could be a lot of, a lot of outrage over nothing. I'm less inclined to believe that's the case, but I will entertain the possibility because I think it's a reasonable thing to say. They end by saying, ABC News' initial response and subsequent actions reveal their priority is to identify and hold accountable the individual who released the video to the public. We believe that uncovering the source of the information is incomparably less important than the possibility of exposing the source of a human trafficking operation. It is imperative that the public be assured newsroom decisions regarding exposing trafficking are not tampered by financial interests or outside forces. And now the final update. First, let me just say, we don't know what's going to happen with the FBI and these indictments. They rejected the plea deal. So there may be stuff coming out in court. This, this is not over. So Huffington Post, you better watch yourself when you want to cite people saying nothing, nothing to see here, nothing out of the ordinary. I'll tell you what, man, it is out of the ordinary, even if in the end it's the FBI indicting these guards. That is not normal. That does not happen every day. It's not something we should be, we, we should just say, oh, that happened again. No, it doesn't. So at, at the very least, the official story is not ordinary. Please spare us your attempts for some reason to protect powerful interests and the elites. We deserve a full on investigation and the evidence to be made public. McCarthy will push for hearings if ABC News does not comply with Epstein inquiry. Good. The examiner reports Kevin McCarthy acknowledged that he would push for congressional hearings if ABC News doesn't respond to his inquiry into the decision against running a story about a Jeffrey Epstein accuser years ago. McCarthy wrote the letter. We've seen it all. I just read that to you. The California Republican stated that he'd push for hearings if the network doesn't comply. I get it. You said that several times. Quote, I think as a legislator and as somebody that serves in Congress, I knowing this human tra- uh, I knowing this human trafficking is a bipartisan issue, I think we should have hearings on it because we're talking about lives. We're talking about young women. We're talking about people who do not have a voice. On this letter, we had the ranking member, Doug Collins, from the, uh, from the Judici- Judiciary Committee, and we also had the ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, because this is a worldwide problem. All these committees could have, uh, could having hearings on this, we can raise the issue. And again, I'm not accusing ABC of anything. I actually want to work with them. I just think these questions have to be asked. Of all of the issues plaguing us today with the impeachment hearings and the bickering and the partisanship, there is one thing that unites left and right. The Epstein story. When this story, when this story broke, all of these people on my Twitter from left to right are talking about it, saying this does not add up. So no, sorry, Huffington Post, you're the odd person out. You are not going to be the media gatekeepers like ABC did, pretending that this is just same old, same old, happens all day, every day. Sorry, no, it doesn't. There are wealthy individuals who are kept under lock and key. There are people who are kept in solitary confinement and who really do have reason to harm themselves. They don't do it. You have all you, you have so many high profile moments where these people are protected and they don't let them, you know, they, they watch them and they put them in smocks and it is, it is, it's, it's locked down of all the people that should have been, you know, put on the rack with their arms and legs strapped so they couldn't move because they had information relevant to American public interest, to the world's public interest. This is an individual who should have been restrained and should have been watched on live CCT camera, CCTV camera. So everybody knew he knew stuff. He wasn't, he was, you get it. It's frustrating. These journalists, not all of them, but many of them, many of these people have just no curiosity, take whatever the government says as fact. I don't care if you think Trump was involved. I don't care if you think Clinton was involved. I think all that needs to happen is we're not getting the truth and we need to. If the truth is that 
Epstein accused his cellmate of attacking him. And then a couple weeks later, for some reason, the camera broke and the guards wandered off and falsified records. I think we're going beyond these two guards. Somebody else seems to have been involved. Unless the guards went and broke the cameras, are you going you to claim that happened? The, the answers are not sufficient. And I don't think anyone will accept this. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment is coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews at 6 p.m. I will see you all then.